a lot of work goes into a short late night stand-up set. Join me, JP Buck, as I spotlight the comedians who came up with some of my favorite coin sets. This is The Setup. Please welcome the very funny Daniel Sloss. I remember, well, to be fair, I think in your head, you were like, right, we're going to do this set, we're going to do it on television. I never believed I was going to be on Conan t- until the curtains pulled back. And it wasn't until I physically was there and I heard that. That was the moment where I was like, oh, okay, now they're not going to take it away from you. So when, I, when we were talking about my sets, when we were booking every organizing dates, the entire time I was like, this isn't happening. Something will happen. Like oh, something else will come up or they'll realize their mistake. And then we started getting on the plane on the way there. And that was exciting. I'm like, this feels like it might be happening. And then I got to the hotel and then it was like the day of the records and we go along to the studios and it's all very exciting. And I don't know if you remember this, but I'm just like, oh my God, I might actually, this might be the time I get to perform on Conan. And then, and then Nelson Mandela died. It was the day Nelson Mandela died because I remembered how selfish I am as a human being. One of the greatest men who has ever lived died. And my first reaction was, I bet I don't get to be on Conan anymore. Like that's, it's too sad. They'll pull tonight's <laughs> show. I'm not going to sit up home. I know, I know. I understand now what I was doing, but at the time I just... Well, what's worse, um, losing that spot uh, because of Nelson Mandela dying or, be, or actually having to go out and be funny the day of his passing? Yeah. Which worse? Well, I mean, I mean now when you, put, when you put it that way, now I look worse. Now it looks worse that I did it. Now that while everyone, <laughs> was, while everyone was mourning, I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, everyone, everyone. Let's not, let's not remember him. Let's get back to straight white men, okay? Please, back here. All eyes back to me. Come on now. Possibly the whitest comedian we could book. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was our, that, I mean, it looks like, it looks bad on us. It's like, this is our response. <laughs> our response to Nelson Mandela <laughs> yeah, yeah. passing is, here, here's the whitest comedian we can find. Yeah. And then, and then Jim Gaffigan. <laughs> There's a joke that was supposed to be in the set right after this. That was the one that I told you, I don't think it's going to go over well. I don't think it's, you know, the audience is going to love it. Why don't we just cut it? Yeah. Which was the obesity versus gay joke. Oh, yes, yes. We did that on a, and, and you were, you were absolutely right to make that call because when I, I don't know because you, I mean, I told you not, I was like, I don't think you should do this. And you pulled it out, but then you put it in the set that you came back two months later on yeah. the show and you did the joke there and it got an applause break. A country that believes that obesity is a disease, but homosexuality is a choice. (laughs) Okay, so if you're fat, don't worry about it. That's not your fault. You were probably born that way. But if you're gay, must be something you ate. (laughs) Was it penis? (laughs) Maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. I mean, that's absolutely not the case. But sure, that's much better. That's much better than me self-reflecting. So let's go for that one, yes. <laughs> I'm a terrible boyfriend. Like, you always have to do the things when you're in a relationship. For example, telling a girl that she's the most beautiful girl in the world. I never told my ex-girlfriend that she was the most beautiful girl in the world. And that was for personal reasons. <laughs> it's because she wasn't. <laughs> and not in a bad way. She was very good looking, but my logic is there are 3.5 billion women on earth. There can be only one most beautiful girl in the world. That's how it works. That's what that means. So all I'm saying is that statistically, probably wasn't her. Have statistics ever helped you win an argument in a relationship? No, no, I, I, it's not in a relationship because really, relationship arguments are never about statistics deep down. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> see, you learn now that I am in a relationship, you learn that it's not, about, it's not about being right, it's about being happy. There are a lot of jokes that that's like the biggest, the biggest reaction to me may come at the punchline. Mm. And then the tags kind of peter off a little bit. For me, this joke, kind of goes here, and then you tag it, and then tag for me is what is the crescendo. Oh, the, the tag coming up? Yeah. yeah. There can be only one most beautiful girl in the world. That's how it works. That's what that means. So all I'm saying is that statistically, probably wasn't her, okay? 
She was livid, right? She stormed out halfway through my PowerPoint, right? <laughs> just left crying and phoning her mum. Just because you paint a ridiculous scenario, <laughs> you reveal that this argument is now taking place at like a lecture hall. Yeah, yeah. It, go, it goes from, so, like, they're slightly on my side because they can follow my twisted <laughs> mathematical logic of it. And then you pan out to reveal the scene of me. This is, they weren't imagining it. This is literally how I'm explaining it to my girlfriend. I am a nightmare.